Well, hello, everyone. I am really excited for today's episode on the Redeem Her Time podcast. I've been bringing on some high level guests lately, and you are going to love um, our guest today, Judith Manigault from Link to Us magazine. And I just want to say, like, at the time of this recording, we literally just worked on a collaboration project where Redeem Her Time is featured in this magazine. And I am so expectant and prayerful over the fruit that is going to come from this visibility opportunity. And if you are a business owner, I especially want you to listen in today to not only, only Judah's story, but also to how she is helping and can help you to leverage your time and get more visibility for your business. So Judith, welcome to the Redeem Her Time community. I'm so glad that you are here. I would like to start off by just asking you to tell us about what are you juggling in this season of life outside of business? Oh my goodness. I am juggling family. I have four adult children and a husband and two beautiful grandbabies. Mm -hmm. And um, I happen to be the oldest in my family. So most requests, most of everything ends up in my lap. So that's a lot of my juggle besides everything that happens in business. Girl, I just want to say, did you guys hear multiple adult children, grandkids, which probably mean, you know, means in-laws for those of you who are younger moms and all of your kids are at home and you think that once they leave the house, life is going to get less busy. Judith and I are here to tell you that your life is still just as busy in the season of empty nesting because don't you find Judith, like it's almost like your time is more spread out. It was almost easier when everyone was under the same roof. And now and it, it is, more, <laughs> it, that's exactly right. It is more spread out. You get those phone calls from your kids who are on the other side of the country. You have to do the FaceTime because you want to see the grandbabies because you're not mm -hmm. quite in the same city. You are dealing with brothers-in-laws and sisters-in-laws and everything that goes on with that. So it's a really full time. So for those of you who think that it's going to be lighter, no, you're being prepared for what's coming. <laughs> it's only just life. getting started, right? It's just oh getting my... started. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And over time, we have this tendency to take on more and more. And so while we may not be taxi mom anymore, usually we're in some leadership roles or some influential roles with people in our life or in our community. Yes that is yes, just fills that space. So. And, I, and I find also that, um, especially, uh, and I'm not quite sure how old you are, you don't need to share that, but I'm in my early 60s now. So I do quite a bit of mentoring with younger women, younger moms, um, younger wives. And um, so that also takes up some time. And, uh, but I'm happy to do it. I'm glad to do it because I remember when and uh, I remember there were times when I didn't quite have that and it would have made such a big difference for me. So that's also part of the mix for me. Yeah. Well, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, Judith is stunning and you would never guess that she's in her early sixties. I'm 10 years behind you. I'm in my early fifties and I'm going to look like Judith when I grow up. So, and you'll understand when you hear her story, why she looks so amazing and things like that. So, so tell us about how God has called you specifically and uniquely to serve others through your business in this season. And maybe take us a little bit on the journey of how God got you there. Well, I consider myself to be an amplifier. I right now I serve as the editor in chief at Link to Us magazine. And this is a magazine that started many years ago. We're now in our 17th year. Wow. Um, but on print, this is our third year in print. But it started as a seed, as a little, little thing. It actually started with t shirts. Um, my uh, dad called my husband, who is a designer, he's the art director for the magazine, called him to design a line of Christian t-shirts. My husband said no. And then we found ourselves in all kinds of nebulous spaces and places in being made to be uh, willing. We became very willing after time. And um, in trying to promote the t-shirts, we figured that we would get the t-shirts into the hands of um, people who were in movies or um, artists who we were listening to on the radio and whatnot have you. And as that process got going, we decided, okay, we need to have a little blog. Back then, the blog thing was a big, big deal. We started a little blog and we started interviewing folks. And next thing we knew that snowballed basically into what we have today. Publicists were reaching out, um, agents were reaching out, and there was such a need to bring uh, what's been done in our community 
out into the world to really let others know. Uh, one of the things that I always let people know about what we do is not necessarily reaching out back into the Christian community. Our interest really lies in reaching the culture at large. Mm -hmm. And so it really, um, it really determines how we put the magazine together in a lot of the content that you would find there. We bring things into the space that would be interesting to the person who may not know the Lord, but in everything that we do, the word of God is in there, is, is layered. Uh, sometimes it's very much in your face and sometimes it's just quietly there. So we find that to be very effective in what it's created for us is that um, I think it's about maybe almost 45% of our readers are not Christians, mm. which we are sublimely happy about. And um, so it just brings them along. We're able to sow seed into their lives. We're able to, you know, we're called to be, uh, uh, we call to reign, you know, to give and to sow into the lives of people. And so we're able to do that through this. Oh, I love this, right? I mean, what a great opportunity to speak right into culture where, yes, <laughs> let's be yeah. honest, culture is trying to drag us in a very different direction than the way of Jesus. And so when we can speak truth and light and hope into that, what a great opportunity. I'm curious on how you landed on the, the name Link to Us. Uh, it's Link the number two in us. What oh, is the story God. behind how that came about? To be honest with you, it's a name that my husband came up with. It took me a little while to get for it to grow on me. But as time went by, he said, no, this is about what happens when people link to us. Mm -hmm. What happens? We encourage them. We bring the word of God to them. We show them that the uh, what life can be like in the kingdom of God. That's what we do. As they link to us, they get to see the bigger and better picture. Oh, and so I love that. That's inspiration yeah. for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And ultimately it's not so that look at me, I'm in a magazine. Right. But like, look at exactly. him. It's, it's, it's just a bigger picture. And I get to bring my sisters, sometimes my brothers along on the journey with us and bring their products and their ideas to the culture, to what's happening out there. I get to show that we are vibrant and we are beautiful and wonderful and, um, and you're missing out if you're not here. Right? Oh. <laughs> and, um, yeah, this is this is where you ought to be. So I've been told by so many people, um, sometimes the magazine might be at a doctor's office or, and they start looking and they're just so engaged and don't realize that, oh, this is a faith magazine, you know? And if I happen to be there, then I explain a little bit more, but I, you know, just to uh, have the honor of presenting that way. I, I just consider it to be an honor uh, from God. I don't know why he's trusting me with that, but so be it. I do well, it, I up, we make it happen and he provides, he provides every single issue, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is what we talk about around Redeemer time is that nothing is ours. We have been entrusted with everything down to the minutes that are in front yeah. of us. And there our role is not to manage it, uh, our role is to steward all of this. And so I love how you are doing this. And you didn't share this yet. So I'm going to pull this out of you. Uh, you're stewarding part of your story as well, because you too have a background in fashion and modeling and things like that. So it wasn't just like we had this idea for, you know, a brainstorm no, doing no, no, no. and things like that. So maybe kind of fill us in yeah. a little bit about how God used that part of your background. Be uh, before I touch on it, I'll say this much. If you get to the point, maybe you're in your late 40s, 50s, even going into your 60s. You should be able to look back and see how God has guided your steps and guided your journey. Yeah. For me, um, I started in modeling as a teenager in my probably 17 years old, only because my social studies teacher looked at me one day and you know he would watch me come in and he says, you know what? Um, I used to work on 7th Avenue. At the time we lived in Manhattan. I lived in, no, we lived in Brooklyn and, um, and he worked on 7th Avenue, which is fashion space where all the showrooms are. And he said, you look just like the girls who are coming into the different showrooms. You really need to give this a try. So put the seed there. 
eventually a friend of a friend was going to an audition for a fashion show, invited me to come as a support to her. Next thing I knew, I was in the fashion show. So that sort of kind of lend, you know, carried through and whatnot have you. The uh, What's significant about my time in fashion, which was 10 years, is that um, in it, not knowing at the time, I was learning. So I was, I learned how things work behind the scenes. I work with, of course, photographers and makeup artists and hairstylists. I work with um, beauty and fashion editors for different magazines. So I got to see what that looked like also. Um, so all of those things then inform a lot of what I do now. Um, also, I don't want to leave the period of time that I was a stay-at-home mom, because following that, I think in my early 30s is when we decided, okay, I would be at home, and then we had three more kids. So our first daughter was an only child for about nine and a half years, and then came the other three. At that point, I was a stay-at-home mom, and one of the things that as women that we sometimes we treat very lightly is the skills and the, the ability that's been developed in us as we're raising kids. So much of that is helpful in business, organization, time management, um, you know, making sure that folks are where they're supposed to be, uh, you know, all of those components then come into your business with you and really shine. So, so much of your background, you can you can look back and see how God has brought you through and how he was teaching you and giving you components as you went along. And then it didn't hurt to be, to be married to a graphic designer. And um, in the work that he did, I did a lot of, um, uh, because he had a, first he was working for UNICEF, the US Committee for UNICEF. He was the art director there. Once he left, when he started his own um, company, I was carrying the book for him to clients and that sort of thing. So meeting with people and talking with people and whatnot have you. So all of that then now shows up in link to us and how God has brought us through. Now, I wanna say something. One of the things that happens generally when God gives us our big picture, God tends to, for the most part, from what I've seen, give us a snapshot of the end product, right? early in the game. He says, this is where you're going. This is your snapshot. This is what you do. Of course, we get very excited. This is where we're going. But he doesn't tell us everything else is going to happen on your way there. That's the funny part. And sometimes if we're not careful, we can become discouraged because we think that it's not going to happen. It's taking too long. There's too much happening. There are too many hindrances but everything happens in his timing. A lot of what you're going through is because he's developing you. That's, a, that's another part of the development and bringing you up to par so that you can sustain the vision. Um, sometimes we, you know, maybe it's a little bit of ego. We tend to think that, oh, well, God gave it to me. So we run around and go, yes, I'm doing this. And then we're not seeing results, but God is always at work, even in the small things. Um, I know for me in the beginning, it was, uh, it was just myself, my husband and another couple, and we worked hard and we worked with each other and we were learning. I was learning skill sets, skill sets that I didn't have as yet. And, uh, as time went, other people came on board, but all of it needed to happen in process. Also, I had a young family, mm -hmm. so God couldn't have me so engaged and so involved that it would take the attention that my children needed. So wherever you are in your walk, remember, it's not just you. God has to consider everyone and everything that's attached to you. He's going to bring you there, but he'll do it in his own time. And uh, I believe it's the book of Ecclesiastics. It speaks about how everything is beautiful mm -hmm. in its time. So Please, yeah. just be beautiful, be cognizant so of that. So beautiful, so beautiful. And, you know, I, I'm hearing traces of God's breadcrumb trail in our life and just that reminder of how he's at work when it looks like nothing is happening, everything is happening. 
because yeah. God, like you said, is, is it's the roots. It's the, it's the core. It's the things you don't yeah. see on the, it's not the fruit. We want the juicy fruit right away. We just want to see all the shiny stuff. And yet if we don't have the roots in the right place and the depth of them and the core to be strong, there isn't going to be the juicy fruit. And like you said, the sustained juicy fruit. And That's right. Just as you were talking, I was thinking back to, you don't even know this, when this podcast first started, it was actually mm -hmm. called Repurposed After 40, because wow. what I noticed in my life, and as I had conversations with women as they were entering the season of midlife, yeah. it was how there was this renewed sense of purpose, not that they still didn't value their roles as you know a wife and mother and things like that. And many of us are still, we're still very much at 40 in the throes of a lot of that, depending on the age of our kids. But there was this sense that there's something more and God's been preparing me for something and he's been giving me these experiences, some of them not so great, some of them amazing to form us and to give us these skill sets and to give us these, um, you know, th these character qualities and things that are going then to be repurposed yeah. in some new way to be able to serve others. And it's funny. You're time. absolutely yeah. right. For me, it was, uh, I believe I was about 39, 40 when all of this started, mm -hmm. it was around that time. And I think one of the things that we have to also realize that one of my favorite scriptures is uh, Philippians 2 13, mm -hmm. where it speaks about how it is God who is at work in us mm -hmm. to will, to do his purpose. He places that hunger inside of us. There's more. I, there's more for you to do. And I'm going to get you there. I'm going to take you there. You just, we're going to go slowly, maybe in the beginning, because there are other things that need to happen. I need to develop your character. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of character development that goes on with this sort of thing. It's not just we show up and we're good, um, especially if you're going to do something that takes you into the public eye. You have to be grounded. You have to know who you are in the Lord. You have to walk in such a way that at all times, it is more important for you to hear what God is telling you to do in following his instructions than what the crowd is saying all the time. I encounter that so much. I have people who come with different types of ideas or uh, publicists who are pitching different types of people. Uh, some of them look good, like that would be a good fit for us. But somehow, as we're going through the process, the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, uh-uh, I need you to pull that back so even developing your ability to hear and to follow and to obey god is important before you get to that shiny fruit yeah there's this like knowing there's this wisdom there's hopefully this yeah. slowing down of things i think it's a good yeah. thing that our energy levels <laughs> you know aren't the yeah. same as when we we're in our 20s because it causes us to slow down and really be yes. discerning yes. when yes. we are approaching opportunities and things like that. So I, I love this. And I love how God has just woven your story together so beautifully. And sure, I'm sure you look on the backside of any tapestry and it looks a little messy, but yeah. from <laughs> God's side, right? Yeah. It's like this beautiful masterpiece that only he could have made all the messy threads come together in such a beautiful way. And I love how you're doing that. And speaking of bringing together, that's what yeah. you're doing with Link to Us, right? You're, you're connecting people together, especially for those of us who have a mission and a message from the Lord through our business. So I want to talk about this because we live in a really busy and distracting world. And as business owners, it can be really frustrating. Like, so we are recording this just after Black Friday weekend, which essentially has become an entire month. And I just want to yeah. say, as a small business owner, it was really frustrating to go through this this year, only because it just felt like there's so much noise out there. There is so much you know, clutter in our, you know, in our inboxes, in our, you know, advertisements that are coming across and just all these companies that are trying to woo you in and want you to all of a sudden you suddenly want what you didn't know you didn't want like 30 seconds ago. And so as a small business owner, this idea of visibility can really be a struggle because we don't have the ad marketing, you know, teams, we don't have the budgets that some of these really huge companies do. So I want to dive into this a little bit more because uh, I love that you help women in business and men, some men in there too, I saw to get visibility, but like, let's talk about this whole problem of getting visibility in a really busy and noisy and distracting culture and media and social media and all these things. Like what is, yeah, what are you seeing right now? Just, you know, kind of from your perspective about how this is creating a challenge for mm -hmm. Christian women who own a business and want to share it with people. Well, I, I, I really believe that uh, as a woman of God, as a Christian woman in business, um, you are there in business because God has called you. 
I, I really do believe that. Um, I would say 95 to 98% of the women, I mean, you have a few that have just kind of stepped out on their own and just kind of doing their own thing, but that's a different story. But for the most part, the women of faith are out there because God has called them, has given them an idea, a thought, uh, a concept, a book, whatever he's given them, and he's taking them out there. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we can become a little frustrated because we don't see how we can fit into this space. Mm -hmm. The thing that I have done for myself as a person in business is I always pray about who my audience is. Who is my audience? First of all, who am I serving and who is my audience? Because it might be the same people or it might be different people. So I serve in two separate areas. I serve uh, women like yourself who are in business, who are now bringing their product to the marketplace and they want to get in front of the, of the masses. And that's part of what I do. And then I serve the people who are out there looking in and looking for content that would inspire them or just looking to learn more. So that's a very strategic space to be in. Uh, my best piece of advice um, as a person in business, and you've done a beautiful job with this, um, Lisa, is perfect your craft. That's the first thing. You have to perfect your craft. The word of God tells us that, um, uh, I believe it's Proverbs 18, 16, 17. You know, your gift will make room, but it has to be a gift. It has to look like a gift. It has to look like a gift that someone would want. Um, and you are to perfect it and perfect it. Do your research, uh, talk to people. Um, do your, um, bring it to market. Sometimes in the beginning, you have to be willing to give it and just give it away because God will create something out of that. Sometimes God will call you to do that or not. It all depends, but perfect your gift. That's number one. Two, get amplifiers, get together with some amplifiers. I consider myself to be an amplifier. And by that, I mean someone who's able to take your message, your gift, and push it out into the world, push it out to the markets. Um, you can do it through a publicist. You can uh, connect with uh, magazine publishers and editors of magazines. Uh, look, when you're looking at a magazine, look, at, look and see who's doing what. It's your books editor reach out to them. Is there a food editor? Reach out to them if you have a food product. Um, if you are uh, have a product, it's a pro product editor, the same thing. You need to be bold and you need to reach out. You need to um, get out of your own head. I find a lot of women are in their own heads about what they need to do. The, the biggest hiding place is your head. Huh. And you need to get it out. Um, talk to a friend. Talk to a couple of friends. Be willing and open to get constructive criticism. A lot of folks are not open for that. That has to change so you can grow. This is all about growth. You should not be the same person that you were a year ago. You should have taken some steps forward. You should be able to look back at your the last two years, three years, five years, and see how you have progressed and grown as a business and as an individual. And also, um, what else, what else? Publicity, uh, magazines. Um, I've done things on radio, radio stations, especially in the Christian community. Radio is still very, very big. And that's a place that you want to get into. Uh, do conversations like these. You know, get out to talk to folks who are doing podcasts and whatnot. There's so many ways besides your general Facebook posts and your Instagram. And if you're going to do those, if you if your budget permits, get yourself someone who's an expert, who knows what they're really doing in that area. So they can really help guide and take your product where it needs to be. Hmm. And that will create, I think, those steps alongside understanding who is your audience? Who is the person that you're supposed to be speaking to? It's crucial. Once you have those things in place, it's a good run. It's a good run. And, um, and you should be able to really touch in being 
enabled to be seen and people should be able to reach you. Yeah. Okay. I love this. I'm just going to kind of recap this for those of you who are listening, especially for those of you who are multitasking while listening, starting with praying about who is your audience and who you're serving. So really know who that person is, yeah. then perfecting your craft, right? What is your mission, your message, your method, such that it, you can, com, you know, compellingly and clearly communicate that to other people that's going to really draw them in and engage with them. And then I love this idea of amplifier. And I love the fact that you call yourself an amplifier because we think about what an amplifier does. It takes something that may feel really small and it it makes it expanded, that, that's expanded right? That's so right. much bigger. And so I love this because I think so many of us, I mean, back in the day, right? If you wanted to advertise your business, it was billboards, it was flyers, it was, you know, things up at the library, you know, and that kind of thing. And while there is such a beauty to the digital age and that we can get in front of people via social media, it's also, there's an algorithm that's working against us, you know, that is not <laughs> graciously mm -hmm. showing our stuff like it used to back in the day to mm -hmm. everyone who follows us. It's one to 3% of even, even get shown it, let alone even take the time to number one, see it or stop and read what it is that you've spent all that time creating, right? right? So I, I love this reminder that there are bigger and platforms it, for all of us. Yeah. Go ahead. And that's why you need to kind of try all kinds of different things and also find out what actually works. Mm -hmm. And you're not gonna know unless you put your hand here, 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 and then you come up with your own unique mix that actually really produces for you every single time. Yeah. You know, and this is why we look at the yeah. ROI because just because this, a guru says to do it, <laughs> yeah, you don't know that they have a whole team and a whole budget, or, you know, they've been doing this for however many years to get That's to fine. the point where you see the shiny, you know, fruit. And like you said, yeah. like each one of us, you know, we've got unique businesses, we have unique best clients or customers. And so how we reach them is going to be unique. I just want to kind of pull in on one other thing that you talked about. And that is that the, um, the best hiding place is in our head. So yeah. often we think, well, I'm not big enough to be on TV or radio or a magazine or whatever. So speak to that person right now who is mm -hmm. believing the lie that who, who would really want what I have to offer. And, you know, we kind of get stuck in our head. I'll, I'll start with my, one of my favorite scriptures, uh, Matthew 5, 15, and it speaks about how, um, and I'm paraphrasing here, don't take your gift and put it under a basket. Yeah. Your gift should be on, on the lampstand so that the light can be seen by everyone in the room. Mm -hmm. um, the, the crevices of our minds can be dark. Mm -hmm. Those are dark places. It needs to come out of you, out of your mouth. You need to speak. That's how God created he spoke and things were created. You need to become so comfortable with what God has given you. And you need to be able to see yourself doing it. You need to talk to some friends about it or your mate or whomever that you have to have that conversation with. But it is dangerous to keep that, um, that idea, that thought hidden in your head. That's a dangerous place. It must come out of your mouth. And in the beginning, I'll tell you, when my husband and I decided that we were going to have a magazine, it went silent around us. It was silent. And our friends were doing that because they loved us. So they didn't want to say the wrong thing, but they thought we were nuts. Absolutely. So for, I would say for about a good year and a half, two years, it went quiet. And Richard and I would look at each other and go, it's awfully quiet. It felt almost like we were in a little bit of a tunnel by ourselves mm -hmm. and we would just be working away, working away, doing what we needed to do. Right. And then God showed me a picture. He says, when you're carrying a baby, that baby, when he's in the womb or she's in the womb, they're not on the outside. They're not being touched. They're in a controlled environment. Mm -hmm. that control environment so that the baby can develop and grow and get to the point where they can then be out into the world, right? And so in the be beginning, it was very much like that for us until we came out and then people would speak about it. But by that time, then we had developed our own, um, our own words. We knew how to defend what we were doing. We knew how to protect what we were doing. We understood that we were commissioned by God and we were not going to turn back. 
um, it probably took about a good five years. And then everyone started coming around saying, oh my God, this is fabulous. Now, the, the people on the outside of our friend groups saw it before the people close mm-hmm. to us, because sometimes the people who are closest to you, it's hard for them to see you in a different light, especially if they've never seen you do anything like that. So um, you just have to be very clear about what you're called to do. Um, be courageous to speak into it. Um, I used to tell people, I always saw Lynn to us as one of my children. Mm. And I fought for my kids. Mm. I go to war for my kids. Um, I, you know, do whatever it needs to do for my kids. So I treated Lynn to us very much in the same way that this is one of my kids. Right now we're in the baby stage. The baby needs this then became a toddler, the baby needs that, you know, and we keep going. And when, as a mom, when you're looking at it from that perspective, you'll do whatever you need to do. You'll go get it for them. I love this. I actually was just telling my husband this the other day, and he did not have the same appreciation. I think you and my audience are going to have. And that is, I feel Mm -hmm. like this process for like launching the Redeem Her Time Planner has been like Mm -hmm. having a baby. Literally, there were nine months of designing and ideation, all of the behind the scenes that nobody else saw. And I was working towards this due date, right, that I was going to come out into the world. And then there was all this excitement around the due date and everybody's so excited. And then I'm sitting there like two days later, we literally got in the car less than 48 hours after launching this thing. And I dropped off like 60 boxes uh, for the first round of planners. And I looked at my husband, I'm like, and now I got to keep this thing alive. Like this is like this baby yes. now. <laughs> that's, that's it. Like, that's it. That's uh, exactly yes. what it is. Yes. Uh, that's exactly what it is, Lisa. You have to keep it alive. You have to keep it going. It has to grow. Uh, when we started that first uh, issue of Link Tools, I think it was 24 pages, mm. right? We're now, I think, 91 pages. But with every, there were, it, it was done incrementally. We didn't go from 24 pages to 91 pages in one shot. It would have just taken us out. Right. So 24 pages, I think that we went to 48 pages and then 60 something, then 80 something. Now we're at 90 and we're growing. We are growing. God has been gracious um, that he's brought us into the stores. He's uh, given us different ways of reaching people. We are now with EBSCO, which is wonderful. EBSCO um, brings content to hospitals and uh, universities and colleges and all kinds of different entities around the world. So, But we were not ready for that 10 years ago. We had to grow. We had to grow as people and become who God needed us to become so that we can sustain the vision. Yeah. So you are is, is faithful. And I, I love too, just as we're wrapping things up, how you talked about if he showed us the whole picture, we probably would do one of two things. Either we would run away in fear. We will run. <laughs> like it's like run. it's like that feels really big, God. I don't think yeah. I could do that. I was just reading about Moses yeah. this morning, right? And he was very yeah. much like, I can't do this. And God right. was patient exactly. with him and still used him. Or I think the other thing we would do is we would run off and be like, I got this. And that would probably be the tendency I would have done back in the day is like, okay, God got my marching orders. Like, see ya, you know, that's dangerous. And, and that's dangerous. As you already know, that's a dangerous thing because he needs to walk you through this whole process. You're, you're going there are pitfalls. There are this, there's that, there are things that you need to look out for. There are things that are opportunities that you would not think twice about, but then God wants you to go there because he has something brewing for you and you need to arrive in that place. But um, yeah, you know, when he calls us, he and he knows how we are made. He knows who we are inside of ourselves. He knows what makes us tick. And so the project for you as the planner right now, he knows exactly the, the mama for the planner. Mm. He knew exactly who this needed to be and that she would be the person to bring it to the masses and she would be unafraid and she would take the chances you needed to take and she would um, advocate and fight for it. Absolutely. Girl, you're yeah. making me cry here. I'm getting a little weepy <laughs> thinking about that. Yeah. Responsibility and privilege and, and yet yeah. trusted each one of us with some, yeah. and if we keep it to ourselves, how is that glorifying him? So here's our encouragement 
no matter how small you think your thing is, like how big is your God, right? And how willing yes. are you to put it in his hands and to put it out there? So we could talk all day, Judith. I love your yes. heart and your mind <laughs> and all of that. And I love this magazine. So for those of you watching on YouTube, it is a like actual imprint. I can flip through it. Remember back in the day when like you had a magazine come to your house every month That's and right. I love this. So tell us how we can get our hands on it. And I know you have something special to offer. And I had God drop an idea into my spirit. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. But how can we get our hands on the newest uh, edition of Link to Us? Okay, right now you can go to Link to Us Mag Dash Stand and you can buy it there. Um, in probably mm, later in January, we should be back in stores where you can get it at your Barnes and Nobles and the Books a Million. Um, at, you see it at airports and, and whatnot have you. Right now, that's that's where we are. And if you happen to be at the library, you want to check it out, go on EBSCO. You find it there also. You should be able to see it there. And uh, um, hopefully your library is registered. Most libraries are. Um, whether it's a library at school, or it's a library in your neighborhood, um, whether it's the hospital, wherever you are. We're in a lot of different spaces where we can be found. And um, I, I hope you do. I, I hope everyone does. Yeah. Um, I hope so too. And, for my, own, yes. my own just, yeah, wanting this to get exactly. into the market. Exactly. And, and um, as just to celebrate our launch, we just launched yesterday, celebrating uh, your launch also, I would like to gift three, I would say five people, digital versions of our latest issue. So, okay, so here's my idea. Okay, right. Go ahead. So you guys just heard that Judith is gifting five copies of the digital version of the new link to us that just dropped that I am featured in, as well as a few other people I know and some amazing people. I'm like, I'm in the same magazine with Sheila Walsh. Like, <laughs> how amazing is that? Right? My husband's like, who's Sheila Walsh? I'm like, it's okay. Um, anyway, so here's what we're gonna do. Okay, you guys know I like to inc invite you to take this just not just on the podcast, but into the community. This is where we really do the work of not just hearing great ideas and saying I should do that, but we actually like go in and do some of the work. So I'm inviting Judith to come into the community as I do all of my guests. We are going to put a post in there the day that this episode goes live. And here's what you're going to do. You have to, in some way, to get your name in the drawing, in some way, you have to share your mission, your message, your method. I want you to shine your light of what God has given you. Um, so what we'll do is this, this episode goes live on a Thursday. So we'll give you through Sunday night to do that inside the community. And then I will do a drawing on Monday. And Fabulous. we will draw five names. So I'm going to make you guys do a little bit of work. Number one, you guys, yeah. the community, if you're not already in there, I don't know what you're waiting for. Judith and I were having this conversation before we hit record. Yeah. If you have a business, you should be talking about it. And one of my yes. pet peeves is all of these business groups on Facebook that don't let you talk about your business. I'm like, what's the point? So mm -hmm. inside the Redeem for Time community, we have a business directory. All of this is free. I give you permission to post and share about your business, about your mission, about your events, about your product, <laughs> about whatever, any day of the week. You do not have to wait till a special post and only share in the comments of that post and hope you don't get, you know, like put on the timeout bench. Right. <laughs> but like you said, like Matthew five, we should be shining our light. Like God has given That's us right. this business for That's not right. just producing income for our families, but to build his kingdom. And so if you guys are not a part of the Redeemer Time community, I don't know <laughs> what you're waiting for, but come on in. Redeem great time time. To do it. <laughs> yeah. Redeemhertime.com forward slash community. When you're in there, number one, you're going to go onto the post with Judith and you're going to somehow shine the light on what God's called you to do. Okay. And we'll do that drawing on the Sunday of the week that this goes live. And then I want you to pop over to the with God business directory. And again, share about what you're doing that lives on there forever. And you can come in and engage as often as you want. We're always asking questions. Who are you looking to meet? What events are you promoting this month? What, what are you looking to learn? Like we want you to get, find resources and make connections and stuff in there. So I will link to all of that in the show notes as well as to how to grab the magazine. If you're not one of the five that gets your name drawn, um, I want to make sure that you guys can get your hands on it. Uh, and Judith, I know you're also on Instagram. Is that the best 
social media platform to follow? Yeah, yeah. we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Um, just started a little bit of TikTok. My okay. my young adults are helping right? me with that. Yeah, you're <laughs> helping me to get there. But um, yeah, absolutely. You can find us. Uh, I believe Facebook is, uh, I'm at JC uh, Manigault uh, on Facebook and on Instagram, we're linked to us, Mag. Perfect. And uh, super easy. Yeah, you can find yeah. us there. Yeah. So go follow and see, yeah, what the, what the magazine's all about and consider that yes, maybe you do have a mission and a message that could and should be highlighted in the link to us magazine, reach out to Judith, have a conversation. That's That's simply how this started. I just reached out to her and said, tell me more about what this process looks like. And let's do it. Mm -hmm. Right. It was such a beautiful fit. It was a no brainer uh, to do this. So definitely reach out to Judith and we'll make sure that you've got ways to connect with her in the show notes as well. So Judith, thank you so much for blessing thank us with your you wisdom. So much, your, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I know so many women are going to be blessed. And I always like to end with a personal question because we talk a lot about, you know, kind of mm-hmm. where time is going, especially in our business, yeah. but I really like to get into your heart and calendar. So as you think about this next season in your life, this, 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 ep- this in the episode, this uh, edition of your magazine is called what's mm-hmm. next. Okay. Yeah. So I love this. As we're ending a year, as we're coming into a new year, what is next? What are you wanting to invest time in, in this season? And what is your ROI? Why, right? Why do you want to see a good return on that time investment? For us right now, it's all about expansion. Mm -hmm. I think that that's, we're in a season of expansion and I see that God has already put some things in place, some relationships uh, that we are developing and pursuing and um, I, I really want to see linked to us. I mean, we're not in supermarkets, in drugstores yet. So we are going there. Yes. And expansion also uh, means languages. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a Latina. I am from uh, Panama, from Central America. And I would, uh, this past year, a couple of months ago, people from my country reached out to me and interviewed me for some magazines out there and did a whole YouTube thing um, of the work that I'm doing. So that gets really said to me, you know what? This needs to happen also in different languages. So I want to expand. Um, I want to expand um, our content. There are other things that we want to cover um, in it. And uh, and people can write to me and let me know, hey, we would like to see a little bit of this or more of that or whatever. We take all of that into consideration. But for us right now, it's really about expansion, about mm-hmm. expanding and getting us out there where we are. Uh, I was uh, talking to a friend and I said to her, one of the things that has happened, I think in the Christian community is that we've bought into this lie that what's happening in the culture belongs to the other side. Mm. No, it was Mm. ours and we are reclaiming it and taking it back. And that's where I'm at. So the space on newsstands, the space on airports, the space in drugstores that we're taking that back and really being seen and not just talking to ourselves, but talking to the world, because that's what we're here for. You know, God called us to share the gospel, to bring it to the masses. So that's what we're going to do. Girl, that is powerful ROI and a powerful (laughs) ROI. And so we are over here at Redeemer Time cheering you on and praying for you. And you guys, as you support this magazine, whether it's being in it or just sharing it out with others, you are helping to spread this yes, message yes. that Judith has. So please don't keep this episode to yourself. Uh, share it with a business bestie or a few, uh, someone who also would love the opportunity to come into the community and get to share about themselves and have an opportunity to win that and possibly even be featured inside yes. a magazine like this too. So thank you so much, Judith. I really appreciate your time. Thank you everyone for joining us today.